So it turns out that here recently, Mario Party DS has gotten a lot more attention recently. And honestly, I think this is more than a better time to talk about one of my favorite, one of the most underrated Mario Party games out there. It definitely deserves some more attention. So I'm not going to waste too much time. <laughs> Why? Why did you do it? Why did you pirate this video? Now all the feds are after us and for some reason a giant Wario head. Seriously, you could have watched it for free. Don't you know that the main character of these things always suffers due to your piracy actions? <sighs> I guess now we have no choice but to bunker down in the car. <sighs> well, I guess we need something to pass the time, huh? Since you pirated my review of Mario Party DS. So, I guess in the meantime, why don't I go ahead and tell you my top three favorite fake anti-piracy measures. So, I guess, uh, sit back and, uh, strap in and where we ask ourselves, what are the top three fake anti-piracy measures as of right now? So, um, before we get into this, by the way, um, what is it? Again, thank Shy Guy Time, Passed Out Kitty. And this is the first official review, uh, for, I mean, there's another one where the art came out, but this is the first project that officially started only in 2021, so hopefully we have a better new year. Anyways, back onto the actual video. Number three. So the first one I wanted to mention is, thing I wanted to mention is that I tried to get the game footage for all of these. Um, what is it that I wanted to do it with permission? Not all of these I managed to get uh, permission for. So for the cases where I didn't get permission to use the footage yet, um, what is it? I went ahead and just opted to have regular game footage on. Um, what is it? Though if you want to go see these anti-piracy measures before I spoil them all for you, um, there will be links down below to where you can check them out. I won't put the names of the creators or anything in the description. You can click it and go to the channel, watch it on there, and support them. That way, I also don't spoil this top three. If you wanted to see the uh, measures beforehand and experience my top three that way and just see them and support the creators of these. So, the first one, or the, the number three on the list, um, what is it? Is one for Mario Kart Wii. Um, and um, I'll, what is, I'll put the creator's names, all, some of these creator names are a little hard to memorize or write down. So what I'll do is I'll see if Shy Guy Tyler can just put him down below. There's the creator's name. So let's talk about this one for a bit here. So for this one specifically for Mario Kart Wii, it kind of starts off uh, what is it pretty normal as you expect an anti-piracy measure to. The player chooses Mario and decides to go to Luigi Circuit. How, however though, um, after making that first ramp jump, um, what is it that you can make optionally toward the end of the track, all of a sudden Mario loses his head and the game kind of stutters a bit. Um, what is it? And then suddenly you unlocked Mario trying to impersonate Funky Kong, but with no head. That was very weird. And honestly, it gets only creepier from there. The game kind of goes back to its main title menu as you expect after unlocking a character. Though surprisingly, not or surprisingly out of nowhere. And the player tries to go to the character select, which seems to be scrambled now. All the other characters on screen seem to be normal, except for the position of the selection thing. And except for Mario, who is that weird Funky Kong model, or Mario pretending to be Funky Kong model with no head. Of course, curiosity killed the cat. So of course the cat was suicidal. So of course the cat decides to choose the headless Funky Kong Mario and Decides to try a race with it, again trying Luigi Circuit in the Mushroom Cup. However, a lot of the track is now black, with a lot of the background objects now uh, still there, and a lot of the Miis in the background supporting you. And then, before the right before the race starts, the game freezes only after a giant Wario head pops up out of nowhere, and I guess eats Mario. The game now comes up with a serious error, saying, uh, dis uh declaring the crash. And that piracy is a crime, if I remember correctly. So yeah, this one I chose because of how much effort I put into it. Mario Kart Wii has a large hacking community, and a large uh, large hacking and modding community, and it was put to great use here, honestly. 
I mean, I kind of like how well this is done. If you're not familiar, Custom Tracks is a thing. So, of course, some modders from Mario Kart Wii wanted to join in on this. And this is a great idea. So, and that's why this one makes number three. Like I said, a great hacking community and just uh, overall pretty good. So, without further ado, let's move on to the next one. Number two. If you know me, I love Super Mario Galaxy 2. Honestly, as well as the original Super Mario Galaxy as well. Though, Super Mario Galaxy 2 does kind of have a big amount of videos on my channel. I actually liked doing my Let's Plays of that, but almost never found the time, which is why I stopped doing Let's Plays. So, you can imagine my excitement when I figured out someone actually managed to make an anti-piracy screen for, um, what is it, Super Mario Galaxy 2. Actually, this very creator made a few attempts for both of them. Um, where does it, Galaxy 1 and Galaxy 2, and most of them were pretty impressive, though this one has the most put into it. He's kind of a Mario modder that actually recently came to the scene, and honestly, I discovered him via the anti piracy trend. So, without further ado, uh, let's get into this one. Things start off normally in Mario Galaxy 2, aside from all the save files having a Mario head. At first I thought this was strange, but then I remembered the file doesn't immediately start after you create the file. You can create the file and then I guess just kind of back out. It doesn't start immediately like most games. So you can kind of start it and leave it there with a character head, but nothing actually saved on there yet. But of course this is used to be creepy as there's three Mario files on there. Not sure if this was meant to be kind of creepy or, um, what is it, unsettling? Or if this was just something, oh, like, person just had a bunch of save files that were never started. I guess that could happen, but 9 times out of 10, probably not. <laughs> but anyways, the game almost starts normally. After Princess Peach's letter, Mario comes out of the pipe. But then you start to notice something strange. There's a pipe with a skull sign next to it. Usually these skull signs are used in game to declare areas that will instantly kill Mario. So, been unsettling there, but as always said, the curiosity killed the cat, so apparently the cat was suicidal. So, said cat, decides to jump inside the pipe, and it gets dumped out near a black hole at the bottom, which I didn't even know could happen. Honestly, when it came to Super Mario Galaxy and Galaxy 2, I honestly never knew that these beginning areas can actually kill Mario, and was also curious as to what happens if Mario does die in these areas, somehow. Of course, hacking can happen. But I just didn't know if it was still possible to have, have a way of Mario dying in these opening areas that are basically glorified cutscenes, if anything. What happens, though, is after Mario dies, it just starts over, except the music's slower, too. Which has me curious, what happens if you keep dying? But we don't really get to see that. Mario actually manages to avoid all the other death, uh, deaths around, and the beginning area is actually a lot more different. But before we get into a lot of the different stuff, there's also the first Comet Medal that's normally not there. Yeah, actually, Comet Medals aren't supposed to be here yet. You're supposed to only see them in Sky Station Galaxy in the first actual mission of the game. And there's usually text dialogue when Mario collects his first Comet Medal, usually saying, explaining what comments are and how they can unlock prankster comments to come. However, this time it says, you don't deserve this Comet Medal. A bit eerie, but okay. I am curious as to what this counts towards, because usually each galaxy has one common medal, so what happens if you collect one in the beginning area? Another mystery we won't find out quite yet. Maybe um, maybe this guy will actually explain it. Again, names should have been displayed down below earlier if you want to go see him and support them. But moving on, there's another area where usually, oh, that uses the gravity effects that are usually one of the game's most iconic features is the 2D gravity sections, where Mario can switch gravity almost to win depending on the color, background, of wall, as well as where the arrows are pointing. However, only one of these works, and the player actually manages to overcome it using a wall jump and the weird gravity that usually sends him backwards. And the gravity zone at the top doesn't apparently affect him at all, it's the normal gravity, for some reason. After a f uh, upon all this though, Mario also runs into a Luma, and a giant Rosalina in the background, which is kind of weird, okay. Um, what is it? The Rosalina in the background doesn't do anything, though. However, the Luma declares some errors as well. Yeah, this is where things get a bit more unsettling. 
Eventually, though, the player does make it to the area where the festival takes place. And Lumas are being, uh, as usual, cutscene. Bowser stomping around, destroying the town, while toads are being, uh, toads and Lumas are being thrown around in crystals. And when you free some of these Lumas, they say piracy is no festival. As a play on words, to piracy is no party. The very thing that was started with Mario Party DS. As Mario continues to go, all the Lumas say piracy is no festival. And then one of the best jams I've heard that's not even actually in the game, but I believe it was custom made for this. Um, what is it? Plays as Bowser, um, the, um, what is it? Starts up his dialogue with Mario. Normally he rants on about he's going to make a galaxy and have Peach Bay Kimma Cake for once. But instead, Bowser rants on about how piracy is a crime and that you need to destroy the game. And even Peach um, does declare the same thing. Bowser even saying that Peach agrees with him for once. Like, Bowser and, Bowser and Peach are ashamed of the player for pirating the video game. Which is not the first time where we would see Bowser actually get onto you about pirating the video game. Or the villain at all, or some other character, punishing the player for pirating the game. And afterwards, in his previous attempt, this would be kind of where the game crashes when Bowser leaves, but this time the player is able to make it a little farther in. Normally, at the front of the castle, there's some looms that will give you a launch star that take you to Sky Station Galaxy where you can begin your rescuing of the Power Stars. However, they don't spawn the launch star. One of them just appears as if it's making the launch star, but no. They actually go on about how you don't deserve a launch star and they gotta keep you here. Basically, they're trying to keep you softlocked because you pirated the game. And, ironically enough, the launch star is gone. Like, they actually got rid of the launch star. Modding is definitely impressive when you can change models, music, and whatnot. Making stuff just dead up not be there. I gotta say, I don't know much about modding, but I'm pretty sure that's not easy. So, definitely very impressive. However, eventually the Mario finds a way to outsmart the Lumas. He actually goes to the castle, and all of a sudden, he's on the mission select screen for Sky Station Galaxy. I... How does that work? I guess, um, what is it? I guess he moved the loading zone to the door? That definitely caught me off guard. I was like, wait, what? Why, why did the door take us to Sky Station Galaxy? All I can assume is that he, like, moved the loading zone to load up the mission select and then the cutscene to go into the door rather than launch into the launch door, which launches you into the loading zone. So, I'm guessing that's what happened. I don't think this can happen normally, but I recently got a replacement Wii U, so I guess I'll re-download Galaxy 2 and test that out. <laughs> if I can. Anyways, so the player does make the Sky Station Galaxy, however, they landed on an orange pipe. The Luma that normally tells the, sh uh, the player how to go rescue the Power Stars normally tells you again, piracy is wrong, goodbye. The player is then sucked down the pipe and then... <laughs> sorry. The player is then sucked down the pipe and then they're put in front of a red Grand Star. I don't know how you made a red Grand Star. I know that in his uh, second attempt at a Mario Galaxy 1 anti-piracy, he used a red Power Star, which is in the game, but only used for one mission. However, I've never seen in any of these two games a red Grand Star. When Mario clicks the red Grand Star, though, that's kind of where the game ends. The player is taken to the Starship Mario, which should just be a rock at this point, but the model is there? Except it is in the Starship Mario, because only the top of it is actually loaded with collision. The rest of it, Mario just kind of falls to his doom if you attempt to explore the rest of it. Lubba, of course, as you probably expected, goes on about anti-piracy and how, um, what is it, criminals aren't allowed to pilot the ship. At this point, the player is stuck, but if you're in for one more surprise, apparently going down the chimney, where normally you'd be taken to the item display room, where... Normally, when you get new power-ups in the game, they become displayed in here as, like, a museum. You get sucked in here as normal, but there's a black hole that just instantly kills you. And that's just kind of where it ends there. The player is forever stuck here. No longer able to go anywhere. So, yeah. However, did I manage to find... Um, however, did I manage to find a more impressive anti-piracy? Yes. Yes, I did. 
Anyways, before we go on, let me make some honorable mentions here. There's a few out there that I'm not going to show game footage of because these are like honorable mentions. I'm only going to go um, name them off. But basically, these are some anti-piracy measures that were a little impressive but didn't quite make the cut. Um, there is one for New Super Mario Bros. U where normally in the cutscene where you Toad tells you about Nabbit stealing the stuff and tells you about the pipes, instead, he actually tricks you into coming... Mm. He actually ends up tricking you into following him, telling that piracy is wrong, follow me, and then goes and shoots off to the pipe to Acorn Plains. Where the player would actually follow him, and upon going into the first level where Nabbit's currently at, instead the player is placed inside a block, inside a box room where lava rises and kills them as 15 toads creepily watch. What I think managed to happen is while the normal Acorn Plains is loaded, whenever the player enters a level with Nabbit in it, you may realize that a lot of the pipes and other ways uh, alternative paths are blocked away. So what I'm guessing is that for these Nabbit chases, the game loads an alternative version of the level that's made specifically for the Nabbit chase. So, in turn, this modder probably kept the normal Acorn Plains loaded. However, um, what is it? Instead, replace the Nabbit level with this, where you're trapped in a box and forced to die. Another honorable mention is, of course, Piracy is No Party. While it was impressive, these ones that I'm mentioning now were definitely far more better in my opinion. Though everyone's entitled to their own opinion. So, what I'm going to talk about is the one with the Monty Mole. Normally, it starts off a normal game Mario Party DS in the first turn, and Luigi manages to make it to the item shop. However, Monty Mole say, uh, says, I don't serve criminals, so instead of letting Luigi buy items like you normally would in the game, instead the players teleport into a special minigame called Run, which looks like the Monty Mole minigame that I forgot the name of. Ugh. Declared as a boss minigame with only Luigi as playable, not even displaying the boss sprite, with the instructions saying there is nothing you can do, and the controls being none, and not even being followed by the normal control display at the left of the top screen that normally tells what type of controls you're using, all of them are crossed off, so it all just kind of fits together. There are no controls. You don't get to do anything. It then starts the Monty Mormon game that I forgot the name of, that I should remember the name of at some point. Maybe it might be displayed by the bottom if I remember to go look that up and put it in the notes, but okay. Anyways, though, normally in this minigame, two, it's a two versus two minigame, and you have to race the other team to escape from Monty Mole, where you both have to work together to shovel away from Monty Mole and avoid rocks while doing so. However, instead, it's only Luigi here, and Monty Mole, who normally stops right before reaching the players, um, instead keeps going, only to be followed by a sprite loading error, as well as a uh, software piracy error that go by really quickly. Only to land on the Piracy's No Party screen, which shows Mario and friends behind a cage. Now, I'm just going to answer some questions about this. No, it is not real. Even Nintendo confirmed that it is a fake anti-piracy screen and even dissed it a bit. As the um, person, the executive, or not the executive, but the person answering the question on the website actually said Nintendo wouldn't make something so low quality or poor quality. I'm trying to remember. I think I'll have like um, the image right here. Like, I, if I remember to put this in notes, here's what um, an image of, I took a screenshot of what the guy said, and yeah, it was actually quite funny. Um, but yeah, Nintendo basically confirmed it is indeed fake. Not only that, but people who said the image is new, well, the music is new, the image is not, however. The image at the bottom of the screen, Mario and Friends in Jail, is actually a scene from the opening of the game. Um, what is it, the part where Mario and Friends arrive at the Bowser's Castles for the fake feast that he threw on... And right now, that's the scene where they get trapped before they are eventually struck down by Bowser's new magic staff. So, it's actually a scene inside the game. But, of course, if you haven't played Mario Party DS like I have, you don't know that, I guess. Of course, you would assume this is, uh, was a brand new screen. <laughs> I mean, it's a brand new screen, but I mean a brand new picture. Anyways, I just wanted to go into that. It was really good, but not better than these. So, anyways... Let's go ahead and get on to number three, or number one. Wow, I'm so off of it today. Number one. Number one! Like I said, I'm being fair, and the names will be down displayed down below, so that way it's a kind of fair representation here. However, this person is very well known for Mario modding. 
And he's a really well funny man. So when I was going to some of these anti-piracy screens, expecting jump scares, and my nerves just kind of clenching every time a stutter happened, this guy made me laugh with his. And this was one for new Super Mario Brothers Wii. So the game starts off a little normal, but some of the options are a little glitched out into just numbers. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely tell this is a modded copy of Mario Brothers Wii. And the game, you can kind of tell nothing is normal at the very beginning cutscene. At the very least, some of these games start off kind of normally um, until just some certain point or wait till gameplay actually starts. But immediately you can see that Peach has a gigantic head, Luigi's head is tiny, Toad's neck is stretched out, and some of the, even some of the Koopalings are messed up in this cutscene. The cake is shrunk, and then like... Everything is distorted. The airship where they throw Peach inside the cake onto the airship, it pulls up, but then it just goes backwards, only for Mario and his distorted friends to run the other way. And even the power boxes and the power-ups inside loaded in the cutscene look very distorted, like very odd. Um, the penguins, it looks normal, but its bouncing animation toward the end was definitely very something weird. And the propeller mushroom has a propeller on the bottom instead of the top. Okay, not only that, but when they launched the items for Mario and Friends to use, uh, we did see the present box for the propeller mushroom bounce, uh, uh, bounce toward the council, bounce off it, <laughs> and fly alongside the penguin present box. Like It's like the castle rallied the mushroom, propeller mushroom box toward Mario and Friends. Gameplay after that, though, kind of starts off normal, except there's no music, no enemies, and nothing comes out of the blocks. No power-ups, no coins, no nothing. Upon hitting the blocks, they just turn brown as normal, but nothing comes out like normal. And there's no enemies around. Aside from that, the level's kind of normal, except for the eerie music in the background. Aside from those few changes, level 1 has nothing new to it. But level 2 things get a bit different. The background is now entirely black. There's no background. This is where things got really eerie. Just like level one, no enemies and the blocks have nothing in them. But aside from that, the level kind of continues on normally. There's also no coins as the same of it. And then afterwards, the player goes on to level three. Normally we meet Yoshi, but as you expect, Yoshi's not going to be here. But then even stranger, something even stranger happens. The level is almost entirely just broken. Back, uh, background objects like bushes are just everywhere. The platform, there's almost little to no other platforms aside from the ground, and even then there's some bottomless pits here and there. Rather than the grassy green background used before in the um, previous levels, instead it's the same texture of, um, texture of flooring that's used in Larry's Tower boss fight that we're actually about to m normally make it to in the next level is what's used for the flooring here. And on top of that, yeah, there's no Yoshi. So, yeah, we finished the level as normal here. I mean, what could go wrong? As normal, there's a cutscene here on the world map with Toad. However, instead, it's a letter saying that the game is now softlocked. And Bowser Jr. softlocked the game. Kind of. So, even Bowser Jr. has caught on. And kind of funny how he says, yeah, who would want to pay to see my dad die? Only, almost every Mario game, that's exactly what we're paying for, is to see Bowser die. <laughs> so, it's honestly kind of funny. I was saying, yeah, I don't blame you for seeing him die for free. <laughs> Anyways, as normal though, the Goomba takes Toad and kidnaps him and sends him to the first level. Normally what these do is that you can go into these levels and save Toad, and an extra Toad house would appear at the beginning of the world. However, remember how I said the blocks have nothing now? Yeah, even the block that to you normally bop Toad out of in the first level doesn't even have Toad. Which makes me wonder, where did Mayro put him? Anyways, so, yeah, he goes on to finish the level again, or exit the level. I actually can't remember which exactly, but basically get out of there. But why not go visit some Toad houses? Surely those are still normal. Not, actually. When you go into a Toad house, the Toad discovers... Hey, uh, uh, thief, don't steal my stuff. And normally, if you were a thief, you'd probably go and steal him and punch him in the face or something. But the door is elevated above the ground. And in case you weren't wondering, the same logic that's used in Mario Maker is actually applied to the new Super Mario Bros. games as well. 
Mario hat uh, and company hat um, or your playable character if you play a multiplayer has to be on the ground in order to use a door. So if a door's in the air, it just simply can't be used. Um, same goes for a sideways pipe. You can't enter it if it's like elevated in the air. Well, unless it's underwater, then you know you can. Uh, it's underwater, then yeah. So the player can't even accumulate items, anyways. The other toad ass that normally gives the player a free star to use acts kind of normal, except when you open the chest, there's no star, and the toad is afraid you're stealing the stuff. So of course, there's nothing to steal. So there's only one thing left to do. I guess just make normal progression. So the player attempts to go take on the fortress where Larry normally have a small boss fight with Larry Koopa. And just like level 1, the fortress is mainly normal except blocks have nothing and there's no enemies. And the blocks and the chandelier platforms and some on the semi-solid platforms as well all are red where I believe they're normally blue in this level. Definitely an odd chain but it does make it more eerie. Also, there's usually a random item block in here, item block roulette in this level, but it's also missing. Because if the player got an item, well, yeah. The player goes on to get to the top, where normally a red door should be awaiting you, where normally you'd enter the boss fight. But instead, it's the final boss door at the end of Bowser's Castle in World 8. Okay, that's nothing too out of the ordinary. We're just going to go in here and... Oh, it's the hallway to the Bowser fight. I guess we're going to beat the game early? Well, it is the Bowser fight, but Bowser isn't exactly looking too normal there, now is he? Yeah, Bowser looks like he has a big chain, it's all floppy, it's creepy. Okay, well, I guess let's just defeat this thing as quickly as possible, huh? Well, you press the button to win the day, but it doesn't collapse the bridge and Bowser keeps fighting. Normally, you'd probably think of, how can you defeat Bowser? You have no Firefly to kill him with that, but it's all too late. And even if you did kill him with a Firefly, you're still supposed to press the switch to end the, unclaps the bridge to end the fight anyways. Or is that phase of the fight. However, before then, the player is killed by a Bowser Fireball. On top of that, the anti-piracy screen shows up, and of course, that's where it all ends. So, if you were to pirate new Super Mario Bros. Wii, get ready for this corrupted mess. Honestly, yeah. And those were my top three fake anti-piracy measures. If you want to go support the creators, watch these measures down below as I've linked them. And what is it? I'll have Shy Guy Tyler put their usernames, which I'll note down, down at the bottom of the screen while, they, uh, while the measure plays out. Like, while I talk about it. And for those that aren't, uh, like I said, I couldn't get um, what is it, permission to use their footage for all these. So for those cases... I just simply opted to have regular standard game footage that takes place at the at a very similar area, which is usually the beginning of the game. So if it looks normal on your screen, that's why. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Peace! And in case you're wondering, yes, there will be an actual review of Mario Party DS coming out later. I don't know if I'll get it out this month, but don't worry. I know you didn't pirate the video. It's impossible to pirate a video. I guess not entirely possible, but you know what I mean. Anyways, thank you for actually watching the legit version of this video. I thank you. And yeah, piracy is no party. Feel free to support your game creators by buying actual legit games and consoles, you know. Yeah. So um, thank you very much, guys. And of course, I hope you like this little skit did. I don't know if I did too well, but I look forward to doing more of these skits later on as part of the videos to make them funnier. I, li I like to make these entertaining. So please tell me what you thought of that. Anyways, have fun.